our, our objective today is to get you to think different than you've ever thought or have new thoughts. I hope you are writing like crazy. I hope you're whipping out your camera and taking pictures. And today is just not it. Today's a piece of the collage, a piece of the tapestry of your life, like a, a beautiful tapestry that's something you'd see in Rome or Italy or stained glass. It's this. Next month, it's um, a, a Mike Ferry thing or Tom Ferry. The month after that, it's um, by referral only by Joe Stump. The month after that, it's, it's maybe you go to something James is doing. And little bits and pieces. And then finally, you're like, enough is enough. And you step up like I have been trying to lose weight forever, but I finally just said, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And so you write this down. Ready? The biggest room in the world. Is it the Sistine Chapel? Is it the Taj Mahal in India? Is it, wh wh where is it? And we all know the answer. It's the room for improvement. That's the biggest room in the world. That's why you're not stuck being you. You're beautiful. You're awesome. But man, if, if you stop growing, it's the beginning of the end. You got to grow. So we're going to get into the business part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and have you open your workbooks to page one. And we're going to get some clarity on what you want to achieve. And uh, um, I love, how many of you like that value piece and how he dissected Ken DeLeon, 35 million? I wonder if Ken spends a million dollars a year on all that stuff. Maybe. Is 34 million enough left over? What if he spends 2 million, heaven forbid? How many of you can handle 33 million a year? Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. So page one, we're sending you a digital copy of this. So I really want you to hack this up. If you're like me, you hate cross out scribbles. I want you to scribble cross out. We're going to give you something you can print, exact copy. But I'm giving you in a hypothetical here. For 2021, how many listings do you want? How many buyers? Now, your workbooks are blank. Some of you want 20 listings and 10 buyers. Some of you want 40 listings and no buyers. Some of you go, man, I've never had a listing. I'd settle for uh, six listings, one every other month. And I'm gonna, uh, I did 20 buyers last year. I want to go for 25 or 30. So it really doesn't matter what you write down. But I want you to write something down now. Just um, you're going you're gonna to redo it later. Is that a fair thing? So right now, everybody, head down. Just if you could dream a little. Now, realistic, 500 listings, 500 buyers, not realistic, right? What can you believe yourself? Like when you sit across with sellers and say, nobody will work harder for you. And you know Tom Days will work harder. You know? Kelly Pressler will work harder. Pitt Miller, well, John Stark's going to work harder. And you don't believe it yourself. Is that, did I get it right? Is that what that is? You called that um, um, cognitive dissonance? Yep. Actually, I actually wrote all that down. I learned a new word. <laughs> but uh, it's true. People have this BSometer. They, they, when you're doing it and you don't believe it, we got a big problem. And so I need something realistic there. Uh, for my example, I put 10 listings, 10, 20 deals. If you're making 10,000 a pop, it's 200,000 a year. It's not bad, right? And then leave the sponsoring thing blank in the group thing for, for now, leave it blank. I want you to leave it blank on purpose. Then next year, I want you to think about, okay, forward thinking, how many buyers and listings do I want? Now here's the thing. Ask yourself in the past five years, how many homes have you averaged a year? Everyone get in your head right now, if you've been in real estate for five years, how many homes have you been averaging? I've been averaging 20, I've been averaging 30, I've been averaging 40. Um, right? Does anybody know what the national average is? Six. They've been selling six homes a year for five years and it hasn't changed. And you think, well, we're all doomed to that. No, you're not. You could step up and go, man, I'm gonna read every book on real estate. I'm gonna go to podcasts. I'm gonna study the most successful people. I'm gonna believe in concepts like write this down, write it down, ready? Proximity is power. What do you mean by that? You're here and you had no idea J uh, James Becker would come, Fusion Growth Partners, and share with you stuff like, oh my gosh, I could, I could bring a coffee bar. How many have an espresso machine, a French press, a Keurig, and a 17 year old? You got a coffee bar, baby. Bring some hot chocolate. We got hot chocolate. We got the donut house coffee. We got French. We got the French press. Bring your 21-year-old. I have a 26-year-old. He's into coffee like people are into wine. 
You know, you go to Napa and you're like, this grape came from the Shenandoah Valley. And this white wine and this red, it's a blend. There's cabs, there's Pinot Noirs, there's the Syrahs or whatever they're called. Ugh, I don't like Syrahs. <laughs> Merlots, I've kind of gotten it. And I'm, you know, I haven't had a drink in five months, by the way, but hey, sound like an alcoholic, but I'm just off. I'm, I got a, no more sugar. But the point is this. He's into coffee. He's like, oh, this bean was formed in Guatemala. Brazil, Colombia, you know, this, and they're, they, the hint of manila, uh, manila, um, vanilla. And so you can do a coffee bar. Quit your, your limiting beliefs. I can't do a coffee bar. I can't have a contractor for 25 hours. Could you get a handyman for five? Is your uncle a handyman? Is your best friend a handyman? But who do you have who's crying out to God, I need money for formula for my baby? I need money to pay the power bill. They're going to shut the power off. And you could say, you know what? How would you like to be my handyman? Now, get somebody with skills, like, right? Like, I have no skill. I know how to do the breakers on the wall if I pop a fuse. I did one yesterday. I am not handy. My wife has a tool belt. The kids call mom. I call Walt. Walt is a handyman. He's at my house fixing stuff right now. My mom and Walt. But here's the deal. Who do you have? Maybe you can't do 25, you do five hour of a handyman. Maybe your aunt can do, we'll, we'll vacuum and scrub the house. And do it. You know, think about what you can do, not what you can or why you can't, but what you could. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, uh, buh, 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 buh. So you got this. So you're, 2022, what will it be? Now, a lot of people just sell, sell 20, 30 homes a year, 40 homes a year for 20 years. But let's say you grow. Now, in my illustration, I just did the same old 200,000. So what, how many listings and buyers? You got that written down? Raise your hand if you finished 222. You're just, it's real quick. You're going to redo it. Raise your hand if you've written something down. I want to see some stuff written down. Just, I want you to just dream a little, realistic. Uh, we're still working on here. I'm not going to move forward until I see stuff on 222. 220, good, good. I like that. So dream a little. Next year, if you did five listings in this work, what could you possibly do the following year? What do you think? Could be the same. You could have more buyers, sellers. Just dream. You're going to redo it. I need you to put a number down. 223. So there's your 10 listings, 10 buyers. You may be able to heck with that. Um, Sydney Silva, shout out. We're meeting tomorrow morning at Huckleberry's for coffee. By the way, there's a breakfast shop in Roseville. It's open every day. Off Lanny's is open every day in Auburn. Huckleberry's right here by Home Depot on Fairway is open every morning for breakfast. Beautiful little breakfast house. We're meeting tomorrow morning at what time? Because how many homes did you sell this year? Uh, or dollar volume? Uh, 12.7 and, and how excited are you? <laughs> and, and, and she texted me yesterday. She says, I'm so excited. I want to meet with you and talk about you. I want to hear about your goals. And I want to share with you my goals. And so did I, what did I say to you? Yeah, I say to you. And we're doing it. We're on. And so who are you meeting with? What are your goals? So, you know, maybe Cindy... I may find out tomorrow that she is happy at that level or she is, you know, I'm capable of more. I'd like to hire some people, buy back some time and actually do 20 million and then we'll carve out a plan. But so what's that? 2024. Whoops. Okay. So I'm going to go back. So go back to 2021, whatever your numbers are, I want you to put $10,000 commission. So in, the, in my example, I came up with 200,000. How about you? So I see some of you have, if you have between listings and buyers, you could have 30, so it would be 300,000 over there. You could have 15, that'd be 150,000. We're just using 10,000 as a round number. <clears throat> You're gonna get new ones and redo it later, 10, okay? 10,000 commission per buyer, seller, just an average. I realize some of you do Eldorado Hills, Granite Bay, different areas. You drove over here from the Bay Area, it's 25,000. So if you wanna use that number, go ahead. But I wanna show you with something. And then the next year, 22, take, However number you have, if it's 30, it'd be 300,000. Do that real quick. And then the next year, whatever it is, put that dollar amount. So you, it's 300,000 right there. 15, it's 30 times 10 is 300,000. Let me see. I'm going down. Yeah, I know, that's good. You got it all good. You got it. Okay, you guys got this? Then 2024. Okay, so we're gonna go back to 2021. Remember, this is the blend of selling real estate and attracting agents and building a sales organization. I am your future. I've done this for 25 years this year. 
My parents did it for 55 years. They walked away from Coldwell Banker. Pitt Miller was their loan officer. He's a great loan officer back in the 80s. And um, I used to call him Uncle Pity. And uh, that's where he got P. Daddy. You may know him from P. Diddy or, <laughs> and Snoop Dogg. It's really him. So after 25 years at Coldwell Banker, they, they got their last escrow and they've never made a dime. 25 of their years of their life to Lions. 25 years of their life to Remax. In this case, Coldwell Banker. And then nothing forever. Coldwell Banker's never sent them one more check. I heard Lions just sold. Did you guys hear that? Did anyone hear? Word is that Lions sold on the street. And they're going to get... Um, Probably, I would assume, $20, $30 million for the, their company. I don't know how much. Wow. Just guessing. How much will they give to those eight or 900 Lions agents that are, that are lifting? Nothing? Zero? <gasps> Why? Because they're all renters. They don't own their brokerage, right? Interesting. And when they're done, they'll just get their last. We're paid to produce commissions. So watch this. Let's say, write this down. Just play along with me. Let's say this year, you force yourself to begin calling expireds or for sale by owners. Paul Boudier has been calling for sale by owners and just knocking them down, knocking them down, knocking them down, knocking them down, knocking them down. Well, I tried, it's hard. I tried snow skiing the first time and it sucked and you fall a lot. <laughs> tennis, tennis looks easy. Let's go play tennis today. You're like, ball went that way. You watch golf, you slam it, it goes on the green. You hit it, you break a window. It's like hack, hack, slash, slash, blah, blah, blah. It's worse than Jack the Ripper, right? Slashing, ripping, hacking, you know, that's a terrible analogy. Now, but here's the deal. Everything looks easy till you do it, and you're like, this is not easy. Walking those guys at the park that look like they are still in 1968 and do an acid, and they're walking on the tightrope. Tom Daves has one, right? We saw a Santa Claus thing. They, that tightrope looks easy, right? You get on it, and your core and all that, it's, it's tricky. It's hard. So life is hard. You got to work at stuff. But when, when, if, if you go at life hard, it gets easy. If you go at it easy, it's the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. You got to go all in. What's the name of today's deal? Would it stay on this? When I finally quit supplementing Weight Watchers with Big Macs, it worked. <laughs> When I, I was Jenny Craig, I wanted to be the guy on the poster at Jenny Craig in Chico 30 years ago. And, and I would supplement with Dairy Queen. You can't supplement with pizza. Do you guys get this? Was I all in, yes or no? Yeah. How old are you? I was 54 before I went all in uh, on my diet and just gave, gave myself to it. I have my lunch. You guys have yours in the back. We have all these delicious put-ins. Here's my lunch, one of these two delicious things. Well, it's not, it's got, it's not right, it's not organic. I used to say that too, and I was 312 pounds. I really don't care. That stuff will kill you, 312 will kill you. <laughs> high cholesterol, high blood pressure, high uh, everything. High, uh, it was high, 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 not good. And I get my blood work tomorrow, lost 60 pounds, it's going to be much better. We all agree? Yeah. I know it'll be better. And no extra, I mean, I, I walk, but it, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but I went all in, because what I ate got me big, what I'm eating is getting me small. I would do boot camps and throw up on the bleachers and puke by the track and do burpees so I could barely walk back to the car. I've, I've done that, I've done all that. I've had personal trainers. I'd finish at the gym, go, man, I'm hungry. So I worked hard, and I'd go get lunch. I, I have spent a year at 6 o'clock in the morning in the dark doing burpees and lost seven pounds in a year because I kept eating pizza and cheeseburgers and sushi. I, and, you know, it's diet and exercise. It's freaking diet. That's my opinion. I mean, I'm, you know. Oh, I can't keep my clothes, they're just falling off, right? And then exercise is vitally important. I'm not knocking it, but why am I saying this? All in. When I was, had nothing in escrow and I got emotionally disturbed about that I'd have no money for my family for the month of July, 
no closings. If I sell something, when July 4th is coming, I mean, who's going to buy a house then? Everyone's off going to the backpacking and hitting the lake and, and houseboating. And they're not even going to come back to reality till the 10th. And if I take a week or till to sell something, it'll be the 17th or the 24th. And then if it's a 30-day close, it's the 17th and 24th of August. And God forbid it's a 45-day close. I'm not getting paid till September. And that is not okay. And I said, that does it. I'm going to stop comparing myself to everyone else and being happy with my three or four deals a year. Listen to me. You playing life small does not serve humanity. You've been playing so small. I want you to go all in. I want you to go all out. You heard him. He said, quit hoarding your commissions. I wrote it down. He was right here. He goes, he goes, he goes, go all in. He goes, margin is off the chart in real estate. What we make our margin, our profitability, 35 million. He probably, even if he spends 5 million, there's 30 million left. He, he goes, go, go for it. Just, 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 and, and we hold ourselves back. Yeah. We hold ourselves back. So what if this year you just sponsored 10? That was my goal in 2017. I could probably sponsor 10 while I list my 60 homes. Ask me what I get paid. Tom Costello introduced me to my wife 30 years ago. Thank you, Tom. Give him a hand. <laughs> Sang in my wedding. And he sounds like, anybody remember Richard Marks? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody old? He sounds like Richard Marks when he anybody sings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he sang in our wedding. We had a great time. And he's my dear friend up from Beverly Hills, Santa Monica area. And uh, he came today. He's in EXP. And um, why am I telling you that story? Oh, shoot. I got it. All in. All in. <laughs> Went all in on the marriage. Sponsoring 10. <laughs> I got thrown off with you, man. I know, I know. Uh, Oh, yeah. So Tom Costello, I listed 60 homes in 2017. I, I pretty much sold 60, right? You make a good income, right? Yeah. 600,000. Maybe you're doing 12, 14,000, 600,000. You're, you're, you're a player in the area, right? Tom, say, Brent, what do you earn today from that? Tom, nothing. So let me ask you a question. I said earlier today, why do you invest your time in a way you'd never invest your money? I can tell you, all of you, you could take his ideas. Now, he runs a business. His ideas will actually get you paid five years from now because you're building a, a sustainable business that's not unstable and shaky as we saw. He actually has a systems, detailed systems, with good employees, right? And then a management team, and then you're the tip of the spear, which is what I am today. I'm the tip of the spear. I don't, I don't know what he does, but he does it. <laughs> I don't know what James does. I mean, I do. I kind of said, I don't micromanage him. Some of you just micromanage the heck out of people. Stop. Um, get the detailed plans and hire good people. I trust them. I trust Drew. I trust James. I trust Rob. I have people I trust that help me run the machine, but I, there's freedom. I mean, literally, it's so cool. So why am I telling you this? Let's say that this year, I get it, you struggle. I tried, I'm not good. I tried a diet, I wasn't good either. Does that mean I couldn't do a diet? No, I wasn't what? All in. You could do, so you could do 10. And if you do 10 this year, that will probably result in a group of about 60, and your income's about 45,000 a year. Now, it's not very good, it's an extra 45, but the 200 you made, or the three or four or five or 600,000, wow. Well, watch next year. Maybe you're one of these people who has 30, 35, 40. Okay, you're three, 400,000 a year. No, I have 50. You're 500,000 a year. Just keep watching. You're two, you, the second year, you kind of figured out, instead of sponsoring 10, you sponsor 15 additional. Now you have 25 you sponsored, but that group of 25 grew to 150 in two years. Is that doable? Yes. At the end of two years, I had 3,000, not 150. That's very conservative because it's not about you. Yes. It's not about me. It's not about Steve, and I met you today. What's your first name? Arthur. It's about Arthur. Steve and I work our boops off for Arthur. Help him prosper and do well. Yes. He will do well. I will do well. We have financial alignment. I've known Steve for a long time. Who, how long have you had your real estate license? 18 years. 
Who talked you into leaving your insurance brokerage 18 years ago? Your best friend. Did he? he didn't know you did, friend. All right, I thought it was me. <laughs> Took me to that. Never know. He talked me into marrying Kathy. I mean, you know, it's good stuff. So here's the point. And we would we we worked together. Then we worked separate, right? I got him going. Then he went on his own. But we were friends at Remax. We were friends at Keller Williams. But if he did really well, it meant nothing to me other than I'm happy for him. And sometimes we could even be envious of, of a, a Tom Daves or a Steve Evans or whatever. But if I did really well, it really didn't impact his finances. But it, now if we help Arthur do really well, it massively impacts his finances in a good way in my way. James right there, who I've connected with before and had dinner with last night. Uh, Rubino's, they're open in Rockland on Pacific for dinner every night. Awesome Italian food. Rubino's, go to Rubino's. Um, uh, La Provence is open too on Blue Oaks through this thing. So you can go down there. But uh, James and I get to reconnect last night. If I help James do really, really well, I'm helping Kelly. And if Kelly does really well, where's Russ? Russ, wave your hand. Russ, would you be happy if Kelly has 150 agents in a year or two? And, and yeah, and let's, let's, let's get James to 150 in a year or two. You could do it in a year. I'm here. I'm going to be conservative and saying two years. That's 112,000 a year. Now, Amir, you own a lot of rental property, right? I, I've seen you buy stuff. You own properties, right? He's a big-time broker here in the Sacramento area, a very humble guy. Every time you see him, he's in uh, Yosemite with his family. He's in Tahoe with his family. He's at the beach with the family. Amir, ha! Ah. No, I'm kidding. So uh, Amir's off. I'm just teasing. But he's off always with his family, hiking, packing. You post stuff. And I'm like, God, does he even work? And he's very successful. So I'm going to ask a personal question. And if you're not comfortable, tell me you're not comfortable. Um, I meant to ask Chris Arola who owns Rent Pros and owns 55 rental properties. He owns 55. But remember, if your payment is X and your rent is X, you know, the, the mortgage payment is 1400 the rent is 2000 then you have repairs and costs of running it. Maybe you're making three or 400 a house. You multiply that times 10 homes if you own them. That's three or 4000 a month cash flow. So Amir, you own a lot of property in commercial and residential. Is the cash flow from it 112000 a year? So, and I'm telling you, he owns, commercially owns, he just got it going on, like, big time. So you, in 24 months, or 12, could be making 112000 with the rev share. It's cash flow. It's more than owning commercial buildings and residents. You guys with me? So watch this. So that's year two. And write it on your thing there. Year three, three years from now. You do 10 this year, you get a little better next year, you do 15 year three, you do 15 more. Now you've sponsored that magical number. How many? 40. 10 the first year, 15, 15. That's 30 plus 40. 40 unlocks how many of our seven levels? All seven, All seven levels, right? So you'll have a, a, that, that group of 40 will lead you to 350. Now by my third year, I had 6,000. So this is, this is very conservative. It's not about you. It's about the people in Portugal. I was on the phone with Eduardo in Portugal this morning at 8. It was 4 in Portugal, but it was 8 for Eduardo. And I, I had the bro broker. I'm on the phone with people in Mumbai. I got Lance. I forget his last name. He's the number one cricket player in India. That's like being, who's the most famous, one of the most famous football players of all time? Real quick, someone tell me. So it's like me hanging with Tom Brady. Like, it, they go, oh, that's Lance. <laughs> like me and Tom Brady cruising. What's up? It's my buddy Tom Brady. Like Lance, and guess who has a real estate license? Lance. Lance guess who's in EXP? Lance. Guess who's doing wine tastings virtually on the internet, inviting other agents to come? And I do that, you know. Tom would show up, and maybe Steve, you know. But if, if Tom Brady goes, hey, I joined Sotheby's and I'm doing a virtual wine taste. I'm going to invite all my friends in real estate. And you get a Zoom link to join Tom Brady. for. Would you show up? Yeah. Well, guess what? Lance is, is doing And it's going to be huge. So I got South Africa, Cape Town. You go, well, that's great for you, Brent. No. I planted 40 seeds and eight of them exploded. Why only eight? It's the 80-20 rule. Yeah. 40 people during Weight Watchers. Probably eight are going to do it. Two out of 10, eight out of 40. Why? It wasn't my time for 54 years, and then it became my time. Why did it become my time? Because I quit playing the victim. I got mentally tough. I got emotionally disturbed with myself. Does that make sense? 
and you can do this. But you're like, no, I can't. I'm just not. I'm not you, Brent. I'm not James Becker. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you and I did it together? I get it that you're not me. I was nervous. I didn't know what to say. I relied upon other people. Now I know. I could, do you think if you want a listing by yourself, you'd probably do pretty good, maybe get it? I'm not sure if Tom Days would, but the rest of you would probably get the listing. <laughs> so here's the deal. But if you and I, or you and Tom Daves, partnered up and went on that listing, would you have a better chance? Yes. Now, I don't know if, was it 10 years ago? You and I went on a listing appointment in El Dorado Hills. Do you remember that? Barely. Barely. It was 10, 15 years ago. He brought me so he'd do better. I had sleep apnea really bad back then. <laughs> and I recently did a 10 minute thing on Facebook. My health coach had me do it, so I lost weight. And I said, I actually was on a listing appointment talking to a uh, husband and wife, and I fell asleep <laughs> while talking to them, like we're talking to them. Oh my God. You laugh. Drew, anybody know Drew Johnson? He works for me now. I, Drew was talking to me at Keller Williams on the floor. Tom Dave's office there. Those was two leather chairs outside of Tom's. Drew's talking to me, and all of a sudden, he's shaking me. I'm like, what, what, what? He goes, I thought you were kidding. What? He goes, you fell asleep while you were talking to me. Sleep apnea, man, it's a for real deal. I've, I've, I put my car in park at stoplights because I'll fall asleep and just drift out. Yeah, wake up every 120 seconds all night long, gasping for air. 30 times an hour, 180 times in six hours, gasping for air. Going to bed was a freaking nightmare. I hated going to bed because I'd fight my biggest battles all night long. Wake up, you wake up at three in the morning, you take, go to take a breath, nothing. Nothing. And you jump out of bed and you hit yourself in the chest trying to reinflate your lungs. And I still went to Big Macs and In N Out and Sushi. And then finally, so you know what? I don't care that maybe you haven't figured out expires or for sale by owners, or maybe you haven't figured this thing out yet, but I have good news for you. When you make the decision on a deep emotional level, like I've had enough, I'm so sick of this. I'm so. I'm not saying you have this horrible life. I didn't have a horrible life, but I, I go, I have to do something about this. Everything's coming in high. Sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, high, high, high. You know, everything's not good. I've got to do something. And I just, and then it became easy. It actually became easy. Are you with me? When you do it hard, it's easy. When you do it easy, it's hard. If John, Tony Robbins says, if you're in your head, you're dead. I'm going to write a book, but you've never written a book. I'm going to do a podcast. You never did it. Write this down. Execution Trump strategy every day of the week. Just start. Write this down. Progress before perfection. Just start. Prog well, why well, got to? No, you don't. Just start. Well, I don't have the script. Start. Do something. Put on a pair of snow skis. Grab a tennis racket. Grab a golf club. And then start swinging the bat, swinging the bat, swinging the bat. Stop caring about your precious ego. Get on with it. You want 100 listings? Go get them. Yeah. Go get them, tiger. You're the only one holding you back. It's not me. I don't got a leash. It's not Glenn Sanford. If you're from another real estate company here visiting, it's not your sales manager. It's not Coldwell Banker. It's not EXP. It is you. Here's the mirror. Biggest asset, you. Biggest adversary, you. You whip this by watching YouTube, by listening to guys like James Becker, by coming to stuff like this, and little bits and pieces. Then no, this will not get you all the way there. But as you go, all of a sudden, I tell my team, I do team meetings every Thursday morning from 10 to 11. I do probably 45 out of 52 weeks. We don't do Thanksgiving and Christmas and the 4th of July if it's on the, right? Probably 45, and let's say you only make 38 of them. You go to 38 of those one hour things. A year later, you're just a different person. You know more about disclosures and writing offers and addendums and count offers and what to do when the appraisal goes south and how to have it not go south and to preempt that stuff and blah, 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 blah. Right? I mean, Cindy's listened to me for how many years? Seven. Seven years. And is that what I do? I mean, sometimes it's the same stuff. So I was like, oh, I forgot that. I need a, has it been helpful? There you go. And all of a sudden, the tapestry of your life, it's a beautiful thing. The pain is good. It's who makes you who you are. It, um, the, the, the victories are good. Embrace it all. When you're going through hell, just don't stop there. We all go through hell. We all go through the valley of the shadow of death. We all have dark nights, dark weeks, dark months. And in 2020, possibly for some of you, a dark year. I, it was fine. 
my, I mean, financially it was great. I didn't enjoy the year. I'm very social. I didn't enjoy that. I'm glad it's over. I can't wait for, uh, bye. Is that Sarah, you leaving? You out of here? Were you waving at me? Bye, honey. Say bye, Sarah. Bye, honey. This is my daughter. So she's like, I'm out. I've heard this a hundred times. Now, so now watch this. But look what happened to the income. 200, now you have an extra 262. You have $462,000. Can you pay off your mortgage, all your credit cards, your cars with 262? That's three years from now. That's with you doing 10 this year, 15 the following year, and 15 the following year after. But the group begins to grow geometrically. There's your 262. But 2024, maybe you sponsor 10 more. I only tried to sponsor people four years ago. Every year I sponsor 20. Because people who weren't ready become ready. Right? I tried to talk to Tom Daves. He politely he's like, hey, man, I'm good. I own part of the Keller Williams. What? What? You say something? So and then, he, and then he became ready. Right? I tried to talk to Sean Work. It took two and a half years. I tried to talk to Kelly Pressler. How long did it take? Four years. So here's what you guys do. You'll talk to people, they're not doing it. And you stop. I, I said, I, I love you. If I could do anything for you, let me know. John Stark went over to Intero. He said, it's cool. I like it, but I'm going to pass. And you passed for how many years? Three. Three years. Yeah. But I kept moving. See, what you got to do is if you're going through hell, just don't stop there. I'm not saying it was hell because they told me no. Sean Work told me no. Curtis Johnson told me well. Uh, Jay Kinder told me no. I have more people told me no, but I was excited about the yeses. Remember Newsflash? I started with it today. You get to decide what you focus on. You could focus on the fact that you hit two shots into the net, you double faulted and lost a point. That you hooked your drive into a pond and now you have a penalty and you have to, you can, or you can think about the good, amazing things in your life. Gratefulness or the pain? You decide. Stop focusing on the pain. It's a self of, um, write this down, write this down. Key salient point number 74. <laughs> Are you ready? This is true. This is really powerful. Uh, this, this could change your life. Ready? Self loathing has never helped anybody or anyone around them. Do we know people who have hate for themselves? And how is the love emanating from that little joy, <laughs> right? No, people who have self-loathing, they're like, I have met a few of those people here. I just got to shake it off. I mean, I'm a Christian. I always want to be a pastor. I'm not going to preach to you. But I will say this. If, if you know any Bible stories, disciples, even Jesus said, if a town won't receive you, shake the dust off your cloaks and boogie on down the road. You guys, even Jesus said, shake it off. You got to shake it off, man. Shake, shake, shake. And, and so now look at that. Four years from now, you, 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 just, you only have really get the momentum in one year, and then they just come to you like, I'm ready now. Frank Valente, 10 months. No, no way. I'm not. I'm independent. No, 10 months there. I'm seeing the XP signs everywhere. I think I'm ready. Boom. Now Frank's got people in the Bay Area all over. Okay. So now you have 1,000 in your group. See how it just grows? It goes 60, 150, 350. Three people do that. Boom. 1,000. Three out of the 350. 1,000. That's in four years. In four years, I had six, 7,000. 6,000, I think. This just my, I just completed my fourth year. Uh, we're just shy of 10,000. And the organization, 17,000 around the world. The sun never sets on it. But I had to put my chin on there. I had to risk my ego, go here. And some people weren't nice with it, knocked it out of my hand. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, if you write an offer on an EXP thing, let me know. I'll probably know the agent. I'll work hard to help you get your offer accepted. We're still friends. You don't have to do EXP. Love you. Because if you're just helping people that would join you for EXP, you're a user. If you just help people who could do things for you, you're a user. When you're winning in life is when you help people who could do nothing for you. Do it all. You help the ones that can. It's okay to do that. But you also got to help people and be okay if they want to stay at Lions. They want to stay at Realty One. Be excited for them. Help them get more listings at Realty One. Come from abundance. And you got to read a lot of books, listen to a lot of tapes, and hang out with people who put good thoughts in your brain. Like, here's a good thought. Key salient point number 75. Do your clients know that you love them? I mean, the people, I want to know that the, you ever, like, I'm not, I'm not buying a spa from that guy, I'm, that gal. I'm not, I'm not buying couches from her. I'm not. 
But when someone's really genuine and they have love and compassion, they listen, they ask questions, they're kind, it's like, man, I don't know, I don't hardly know this person. I feel like I could hang out with them. They have this ability to connect on an emotional level. Do your clients know that you love them? Because if they don't, they'll leave you. Write this down, write this down. (laughs) Satisfied clients go away. I'll write it down again. All my clients, yeah, they're satisfied. I did a great job. Satisfied clients go away. Raving fan clients stay forever. You couldn't. I bought a lot of cars over the years, but then I met Zach. And I bought seven straight cars from Zach. Never had a car guy. But I really like Zach. Guess who got his real estate license? Guess who now is an EXP agent as of about four or five months ago and went full time last week, quit his job. And he's nervous and scared. He's English, cool guy, sold me a bunch of Range Rovers, just sold me a new fancy car for the tax write-off. But it's pretty cool. Now watch this. Watch what happens. Remember, your income from real estate's still at 200 if you're like everyone else. But no, I'll be at four or five or 600. There's 750. Now you have freedom. You have four years to freedom. And, but you messed up. You have 1,000 people in your group. It's so not about you anymore. (laughs) So the next year, you got 3,000 and you got $2.2 million in rev share. That's a lot of rental properties. That's positive cash flow. Yep. Mine will be five times that this year. It'll be over $10 million. Right? Think, well, you're special. You have the ability to speak about it. I will help you. Let's do it together. No, if I ever said no, if you text me one more time. <laughs> Is there anyone I don't take your calls? I don't, I'm here to help. Do you work all the time? No, there's plenty of times. Hey, I'm, in, I'm off on vacation. I, I can. I'm with my wife on a date. I can take her out. But we're, we're going out tonight. You want to find me? Sutter Street Steakhouse. They're open. <laughs> only only to share the hidden restaurants. Support them. These people are going under. You can only, if you call them, they're not open. But if you go online and book a reservation, they're totally open. The restaurant's full. It's awesome. Great steak, red wine. She drinks the wine. I get excited. Anyways, it's awesome. It's totally awesome. What? 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 I'm 30 years married. I have learned about wine. Now, um, so, so with all this in mind, so I, I, listen to me, listen to me. Is Coldwell Banker sitting here today? Is Lion sitting here today? Is Remax Gold today? Realty One, Greg McClure sitting here today going, okay, listen to me. I want to get you out of real estate in five years. I want you not to have to sell. I retired. Hey, Miguel. The guy, watch him. Brand new agent, killing it. How much, how much, this is your second year? Year and a half in. How many, what have you sold the last 12 months? This is my first full year. I closed 23. 23 in this first year. That's awesome. I love that kid. He's a kid. He's got babies. I love him. I love him. But here's the deal. We're here going, we're going to get you out of it. I love real estate. It's fun. I don't dislike real estate. But 17 months later, I was done. I was driving to Newcastle, listing a Loomis, listing a five-acre property, 3,200 square foot with the pool, split rail fence, sprinklers through the pasture. Is, is Loomis desirable? Yes. Is five acres good? 3,200 square foot home, dream postcard, Norman Rockwell property, $800,000. We're not supposed to count the commission. Right. <laughs> and then I listed at six. MLS is two and a half, so I have to keep an extra half. Three and a half percent on 800,000. So it's actually, you, some of you go 800,000, two and a half percent of that is, no, 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 it's 21. No, it's three and a half percent. When you learn how to do it, we'll teach you how to get 6% every single time. And then you, put two, you get three and a half. This agent's inability to provide their value yeah. and just go low. Now it's, oh, commissions are two and a half. It's terrible. I think it's great as a listing agent, yeah. right? So I only do 60. So everybody's inability to do that got me three and a half on 800000 It's like $27,000 check. I'm driving there going, what a colossal waste of my time. Because I'm going to get this listing. I'm going to have to do all the photography staging. And we have staff for all that and just talk to them, do all the disclosures. Then I'm going to have 20, 30 agents call me because it's a 
cream puff. And then we got to present all these offers, put it in escrow. Then we have escrow, mortgage, appraisers, title, home inspectors, roofers, pest people, blah, 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 blah. Then I'm going to have to go through the process for 30 to 40 days. Then it's going to close, and I'm going to get my $27,000. And if I'm capped with EXP, I'll keep my $27,000 minus $250. Bucks. And if I did 20, then I, then I don't even have to pay the 250. It's just 75 bucks and a $25 broker review fee. No, you know, and I'll get this. And it's going to be like $26,700, $800, a good check, right? And I'm driving there going, I, I, don't, I absolutely don't want to be here. <laughs> See, I want to be with Eli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eli, how long have you been with EXP? Just came in about a, what, week and a half, two weeks? I want to hang out with Eli. I want to hang out with James. I want to hang out with you. <laughs> I want to help you guys. I want to help you have a life, not just get on that treadmill. You're doing 30 homes a year. It's good. Do 60. <laughs> Whoa. Do 90. Do, do 200. All, the, all of a sudden, you're exhausted unless you get the systems, the detailed systems, excellent employees, and a management team. It, I'm telling you. Most people, most agents are exhausted. The divorce rate is through the roof. Yeah. Your kids are growing up without you. So, short-term pain, long-term game. You've got to go all in. This is called the All-In Business Planning Workshop. If you will get, if you will have at least 25 FLQA out of those 40, not even 40, it's only six levels, you're going to have 350 agents. We have calculated our agents are worth 750 a year. That's just what the, the rev share calculations are. So you multiply that times 350, and that's where we got this 262.5 with 350 agents. If you go back, we didn't make up those numbers. There it is, 262.5. You go 150 times 750, it's 112.5. Those are, those are, it wasn't, oh yeah, it's probably gonna be, no, it's actually what it is. And here's that, and here's this, and there's that, and it's, it's multiplying times the 750. 3,000 is gonna get you about 2250. So you need to have uh, the, the 25 FLQA, and then um, the revenue share, when you take 262.5, you divide it by 12, is 21,000 a month. Could you budget more with that, yes or no? Now this isn't you having 3,000 agents. This is you telling back here at the 350 amount, you, you have 350, you personally enrolled uh, 40, and 25 are selling a home every six months. If you're at 40, it could be a lot better. My numbers were closer to 1,000 because I was at 40. So I ended up getting more because I get the seventh level. So that's pretty cool. And then um, that will help you pay off credit cards, pay off. Will that cover your mortgage, yes or no? Yes. So when you talk to the next person about it, are they going to drag you across the fence to their side? Like it'll never work. It's a pyramid. It's a Ponzi scheme. All it is is if they work at Lions and Coldwell Banker and Remax and Keller Williams and won't come here, their brokerages keep it all to run the behemoth overhead. If, if I had a small brokerage and you bring people and I said, hey, here's a check, I'm going to share some of the revenue because you brought all the people here, is that a bad thing? It's a good thing, but people who don't understand it will make it a bad thing because the management team at Remax Gold, at Keller Williams, at Lions, at anywhere, Oh, it's a threat, and they're going to throw everything. Because if, if, if everybody leaves, it comes here. So they're telling them why don't buy an in and out stay with Burger King. Don't go to Del Taco, stay with Taco Bell. You're not a, you're not a, a, a Raiders fan. You're a 49ers fan. I slobbered, sorry. Don't drink that. Okay. I actually scored three points. Boop, right in there. I get excited. So here's the deal. I mean, right? You're, you're not a Republican, you're a Democrat. You're not a, you know, whatever, life, right? And so don't be surprised by this. When you step out to do something great, I promise you, every time I start a diet, brownies will appear at the office. Every single time. There's a potluck that night. No, I'm not kidding. Have you noticed this? It's like the... Demons from hell, like, let's give them a milkshake. Someone you've never met. You want a milkshake? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. When I started my process five months ago, it was like people started. Then now, not so much anymore. Like, oh, we're done with him because he's really all in. <laughs> Are you all in? They won't mess with you when you're all in. But you're kind of one foot in, one foot out. Oh, we're going to mess with them. Let's get their foot out of the good pool and get them over here in the kiddie pool and just keep them there splashing forever. And, and, and. Listen to me, write this down. 
Don't die with your music in you. You cannot fake authenticity. People love it. Go, well, I'm not, just go for it, man. There's something about it. Like, I don't know what Amir's so excited about, but I'm a better listen because he's really pumped. You know what I mean, man? If you're not getting results, two things are happening. You got cognitive dissonance, dissonance going on. I like that. Or, or, or B, you're boring. Either you don't believe what you're telling people, you're, there's something going on there, and there could be a variety of other things. But I think some people, it's just like, I remember losing a listing presentation. I remember losing a listing presentation. And I always ask, you lose a buyer listing, why? Well, why'd you decide to, you lose an agent, they sign up with another agent in EXP. They stole my EXP agent. No one stole your agent. They picked who they want to be. John Brophy said, I, Maureen Barker stole me from him at Keller Williams. She, she was my spawn. I go, John, she, I was not in. He inspired me not to join. That's mean. Okay. But, <laughs> but he literally said, I would, you shut up, pop me now. I'm like, dude, nobody owns anybody. A seller gets to pick who lists their home. Just go, what did, and I lost to a particular agent. Turned out I got him in real estate. He's a dear friend of mine. If I was in big trouble at 3 in the morning, I'd call him. He's not an EXP. He owns a company with 180 agents. He still hasn't come. And I'm still a dear friend. I absolutely love him. And, and, and I didn't know I was going up against them, and I lost. And I said, why did you? I didn't even know who it was. So why did you list with this other company? We decided to list with I go, really? I go, this is how I make a living for my family. I always like to learn. What did they do that I didn't do? Well, they provided 25 hours of contracting and they're doing a coffee bar at the first open house and, and they're cleaning my windows inside and out. And there was so much value. That, but she didn't, they didn't say that. They go, we actually interviewed five companies. You were our second choice. Who wants to marry the girl of your dreams and be her second choice? Yeah. Right? So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel so I'm glad I was number two. <laughs> I want to be number one. So, and I asked them, I said, well, here's the deal. Everyone came over, they had their bound C cloud CMAs. Some of them had laptop presentations. Some of them had briefcase or suits and ties and this. They go, you, you were the worst dressed. But they go, they go man, you, we, were, we were sold on you till Steve came over. I go, really, what did he do? They go, he just looked at us and says, I, there is nobody that will work harder than me to sell your house. You say jump, I say sell. How high? I give me a right arm to have this listing. I can promise you nobody will talk to more. I'll talk to every agent in my county. I will market, open house. And he went off all these things he do. And he goes, just, I want this listing so bad I can taste it. He goes, what do you say? And they go, we like this guy. And they listed with him on the spot. I thought back to what I did. I was getting kind of lazy. I usually get my listing. So yeah, let me know. Let me know. <laughs> right? Let me know. No. My coach, Sherman, Richard Sherman from LA, taught me how to get a listing every time I'm at the table. We'll save that for another event. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a long story and I'm, I'm short. But let, let me tell you this. Ask questions. Why you, what made you choose this person? What, and learn, and then change your game. Get better. Write this down. Write it down. Get bitter, which will not serve you or your family, or get better. The choice is yours. You can be bitter, upset, cranky, grumpy. Brent was late to the call. Uh, the California State broker was mean to my uh, agent, and they quit. And oh, I agree, that sucks, but... I wish I could tell you everything would be perfect. No one ever be late. Every ESP employee would be polite. You'll never have a late. This stuff happens. Let's deal with it and move on. And so this is pretty cool. So by the way, this is a very special bell curve. EXP is right here, about right here in the innovator stage. We went from 1,200 to 40,000. <laughs> we are coming up into the early adopter phase and about midway through the early adopter phase there's a tipping point this thing's going to go freaking nuts you guys are all here innovators people still think you're crazy right yeah. they think you're nuts stay with it stay with it cindy yes. did you think be honest did you think i was crazy for leaving keller williams to come here four years ago 
and stand up real quick. But I, be I begged you to come. She was my number one agent on the Brent Cove team. And I didn't want to leave her there. And taught her how to do real estate. And I said, look, it's, it's 8,000. 16 for me, eight for team members. Everyone gets that deal. I go, if you don't like it six months, I'll write you a check for four grand. I'll split it with you. So I took her risk and cut it in half. And then I said, have I ever done you wrong? Have I ever misled you? Have I ever not kept my word? Have I? No, no, no. I said, then I'm going to ask for some, for some credit, for, for some trust here. I'm going to ask for return. I'm going to ask that you take a chance on me and go to EXP for six months. She did not want to go. So you've been here four years now. How do you like it? And do you have $100,000 worth of stock in this company for your family's future? What do you have? I have $375,000. Four years. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to see the interview I did with her and Darcy, it's on the Branko YouTube channel. You can send it to people. They both have coming up on $400,000. How many years um, were we at? Uh, I think Darcy and I were at Keller Williams for how long? Like four or five years? Yeah, uh, eight years, but yeah. yeah. Everything gets bigger as time goes by. <laughs> My muscles when I was 18. So, you know what we left with? Darcy and I left Keller Williams with after those eight years? Nothing. What'd you leave with after two years? And Keller Williams is a fine company. If you, if you want to just jog on a treadmill for the next 20 or 30 years, like my parents did for 55 years, any company will do. And I think Keller Williams is one of the best companies if you're going to treadmill it and just run. Yeah. What do you mean treadmill it? I mean, OK, don't go do all the listings and buyers are running all over Sacramento. And they look at you, do you, just, do, you do Redding too? If you're here, do you guys want to drive to Redding? Do you do uh, Las Vegas? <laughs> right? And, and it's like, no, buy a house here. You have some great irony. But so this is where we are, right here. You guys, it's coming. You think you like our stock at 40,000 people? It's 60 something a share. You like it's 74? No, it's 67, yeah. It's in the 60s. 67. So here's the deal you like our stock at 67 a share with 40,000 agents. We will have 100,000 in the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. Dade thinks we'll do it in 12. I say it's going to happen with international and local. 100,000 agents. Do you know what you do when you have 40,000 produces enough revenues to create enough profitability for our stock to be worth 67? Guess what's going to happen at 100,000? That stock will be worth, in my opinion, I can't even say, but more. <laughs> I'm not a stockbroker. They don't want to say it. But I'm telling you what, when the stock dipped to 42, I told my wife, buy. She's like, are you sure? I go, heck yeah, because I am certain of the future of this company. And Lions isn't making their agents owners. Intero didn't. Gino got 80 million when he sold to Warren Buffett and then became the CEO of, of Berkshire Hathaway. He got it all. James O'Brien for Remax Gold, Mike Mobley, Bev Kendall, Tim Yee, these are the executive team. They're going to have it all. The agents, 2,800, nothing. Yeah, but I get a desk. I got, I got a private office. That's like saying, I've been renting for 15 years in Granite Bay. I love it. My landlord mows my lawn. <laughs> and he actually does pool chemicals and keeps the pool the perfect temperature and clarity. Think about what you're saying. It's insane. Anyone who rented for 20, 25 years in San Jose, Los Gatos, Palo Alto, they blew it. I don't care if they, they cooked them breakfast. I'm telling you, it is going to be the most exciting ride. We are the Amazon of real estate. And so, yes, we want you to work with buyers and sellers, but I want you to get to the point where you don't have to do that. I cannot tell you what it's been like for two and a half years. You know how many clients I have? None. Yeah. You know how many sellers I need to talk, call back? None. Mm -hmm. You know how many buyers, agents are frantically trying to get a hold of me on a listing because they left their purse in the house? or lock their keys in the house, or they can't get in the lockbox doesn't open, or the seller's calling me because the door was open, or am I doing open houses this weekend? Because the neighbor, you guys with me? Yes. It's a beautiful thing. So if you want to do it for 20, 30 years, go ahead. Um, 
I think what I'm going to do is, I think, uh, how much more time do I have? Five minutes or five? Five. Okay. So let me check the schedule. We're on time. Good. So we're going to rip through this. I got five minutes and we're going to break for lunch. You guys ready for lunch? Yeah. Five minutes. Do you have one of these? You need to get one. If you sponsor five, it unlocks level two. You see the two? If you sponsor 10, you unlock level three. 15, you can download a PDF at brankgove.com. You'll see wealth chart. You can download this. Go to Kinko's FedEx. They'll print it for you, right? Yeah. And, and we hand drew it. What's it look like when you hand draw it? You want to watch? This works. Everyone look. Right here. Ready? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a guy named David Golden in Las Vegas. He sponsored five, then he sponsored five, then five, and he's unlocking level two, level three, level four, level five. And then the reds were people who were just about to sign up, unlocked six levels. And then those are the agents on level two. He had 65 agents in that square box, 77, level three, 75, 53, 14, three. And he knew he wasn't qualifying for level four, and he had three agents. That's 12,000 here he wasn't getting. But he had 312. You know how many agents he has now? Over 1,000. Mm. Oh, yeah. well over 1,000. You know how many he has on, on this level? I think he's got um, 150. Wow. At 4,000 an agent, let's do 100 at 4,000 an agent. What's that? 400,000 a year, just from one of the seven levels. That's why getting to that 42. Then on the right, we're prospects, right? See, here's your prospects here. Generals, these are big whales on the right, in process, people that are really close. And then I'm just working with them. They're hot, they're very, because you'll forget people. So you don't want to forget people. Work with this. Keep it in front of you. Look at it, look at it, look at it. I'm going to flip through here real quick, see if I can find it. Yep, he knew what I wanted. This is what, right there, I'll make $10 million this year from that. That, that's my original list. Some of you see your names on there. John Stark was number 13. I had to white him out. <laughs> I thought he was going to join. Sponsored Alex, and then John came back around even after 40. He's not even on this list. Sean, Sean Work is not on the list. Tom Daves. People told me no, too. Everybody struggles. It's okay. Joey's there. So, and then, I, then they started talking to people, and I write down the people they talk to. I had to put paper clips. I looked at this at stoplights. I looked at it at stop signs. I looked at it in parking lots. I looked at it in my driveway when I left at my driveway. Because I knew where my future was. I was certain. Man, you got to get some certainty in your life. So how do you do that? Go to Tony Robbins' event in March. It's virtual. It's, it's like 9 in the morning till midnight. And in your home, bathroom's 12 feet away. You go, we used to go live, and there's like 8,000, 10,000 people there. And you go to the bathroom, and there's 50 people in line. And you sit there in pain and wait to go. The virtual is actually, I like it better. And if, if you, if you want to eat and you're gluten-free, it's all gluten-free because it's your house, your fridge, your gluten-free food. So it was actually really good, but that's the stuff. I've been three times. What are you, Dom, didn't you memorize it all the first time? I got maybe 10% the first time, 20% the second time. Third. I still got so much to learn. Every time I have new epiphanies, new like aha moments, right? Again, your aha moment, maybe here today, what I said earlier, Success is something that happens to other people while I sit on the sidelines and watch. That is the story you tell yourself. And you need to stop that limiting belief. You need to say, why not me? Why not now? Why don't I move forward with love in my heart, reach out to people, and if they say no, that's on them. But here's the deal. People buy franchises because they don't want to risk their ego. Give me McDonald's franchise. I'll give you a million bucks. Don't make me do sales. Don't make me risk my ego. All you're doing is trying to help people. Some people will brush it away. And you protect your precious ego and you stay broke. Calling expireds, you put your ego out there. They're mean. Expireds can be mean. For sale by owners can be really mean. <laughs> right? Door knocking. I, we had dinner last night with Lexi, right? She started at 20. She's 26 now. And she goes, she goes I've been bitten by dogs door knocking. <laughs> Little sweet Lexi. She's cute, sweet. <laughs> dogs mauling her legs. Is Lex, was that a struggle for Lexi? Who wants to be chased? I've been chased out of backyards by police German shepherds. So this right here, whatever works for you, this is what I use. Plus, I had a wealth chart. But this traveled everywhere with me. The wealth chart's huge. It's a big poster board. I see it in my office every day, every day, every day. If you don't see it, you'll forget it. Why do I forget? Because you don't see it. I got these things everywhere. 
and I have little soups, and I have other things, lean and green meals and fish. I've learned. But it's everywhere. It's in front of me. I remember. Oh, yeah, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat one of these. Because if I don't eat one, then I want to go get to Taco Bell, because I like Taco Bell. I like burrito soup. I do. I know it's shocking. Okay? I like sushi. Every Christmas, we do what? Go to Makuni's? We didn't do it this year, did we? Because they're closed. I know. How do you get me back as I'm wrapping up? Thank you. So do the wealth chart. You could make it by hand, or you could download one if you're this. Um, and then uh, build a list of names for real estate or for agent attraction. You know, who do you know you could ask refer with? Look at all these different people. Oh, so you guys are taking pictures. We will send this to you. You're all going to get a digital copy of this. Um, but all the different people you could talk to. Make a list of 10 friends, 10 relatives. Just, well, my Uncle Buck, he hates me. Write him down anyways. Quit, you don't know. <laughs> Uncle Buck, would you help me? Sure, honey. Oh, God, I thought he hated me or whatever, right? Ex-coworkers, uh, college friends, childhood friends, folks. Brainstorm. Let your, I sat with my 17-year-old yesterday, and I go, write down everything that excites you about 2021. And Ty, my 17-year-old, wrote down road trips with my buddies, uh, rock climbing, a whitewater river rafting, moving to Japan. He wants to live there for a month or two and learn another language and live in Japan, and it's going to happen. Um, he wrote down uh, all these things. Be super fit. He already is, but he's really like, he knows the source of his food. He is not like his daddy. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> He's like, he's into grass-fed and all this stuff. It's weird. Um, <laughs> do you ever you grow up going to McDonald's in high school and getting like 18 cheeseburgers for five of your buddies, and then you ate them all? And <laughs> now you know why I had a weight problem. So, so wrapping up, and we're going to go to lunch. We're going to go to lunch. Create community with your groups. You, you do a wine tasting in, the, in Plymouth or Jackson, they have wine tasting over here. They have it by Lincoln. You can go to Napa. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be Napa. Get a beach house, VRBO, Airbnb it. I rented a $5.5 million cabin, log cabin, on top of the mountain. Was it stunning, Noel? It's 1,200 bucks a night. You think, you know, two nights, 2,400 bucks. You get a big commission, maybe splurge. Treat your family, but you dream a little. You start to feel differently, right? And so, do, do, you could invite your group up. Do you have your family? The next day, have your group up for a three-hour little get-together. You guys did, where'd you guys go? You went to Tahoe? Yeah. This crew, this group of four. You went to Truckee, yeah. and you all got together, and you did vision boards, dream boards, just the four of you. you they sent me pictures, and it was awesome. And you're do, you had so much fun, you're doing it again, right? You're going to Truckee. The dream team. You form a dream team. <laughs> I, I would get people, when I had no group that first month or two, I'd say, meet me at my office. So we'd meet in my office, where you are, where you are now, and it would be 7 o'clock. Was anybody there in the original group? And we, we'd watch training videos for EXP. I'm a real partier. I'd make popcorn, <laughs> hot chocolate, green tea. I would bring a bottle of red wine, a bottle of white wine. And people might have a glass of red wine, glass of white wine. I had a couple cold beers for the beer drinkers. And people would have a beer, a glass of wine. Somebody might have had two. I wasn't watching. But it wasn't, <laughs> it, it wasn't like, let's get schnot-faced at Brent's office and watch Rev Share. But no, this is our future. But I made it fun. And we'd make popcorn. We might have some cookies. And <laughs> like I said, I was 300 pounds. But, uh, all right, so do that. List five events you're going to do this year. You're going to do a beach thing. You can do a cabin thing. You're going to do a wine tasting. You do a, go take your group whitewater river rafting. Maybe go climbing. Do some things to create community. People love that stuff. I am doing in May the Century Club in Napa. And the Century Club, Glenn Sanford's flying in. Jason Guessing, Michael Valdez, Dave Kennard. Um, Every major Stacey Onan, every major president, CEO of the board, they're all coming. I just invented it. I invite them. They're like, Napa, it's a world-class destination with world-class cuisine and wine. They're all coming. I just made it up. I made it up like a month ago. I picked the date. We're doing an AXR. AXR is by Yontville. It's owned by Courtney, who is the CMO of EXP, chief marketing officer. She owns a fifth of that winery. She was thrilled. We're going to have seven culinary chefs handmade pizzas, lobster, shrimp, lamb lollipops, and just all these delicacies. Yeah. Delicacies. And then there'll be wine tasting, live music, catered. It's going to be all out, and, and it's going to be an amazing with all the superstars. There'll be about 200 people there. And I named it the Century Club. 
in Napa in May, and you are all invited. And the reason it's, and it, you got to qualify. Because yeah. yeah. we, we could have 30,000 people there, okay? We have 40,000 to come in. People would want it. Does this sound like something you want to go to? Yeah. So part of it was to give you a dream of, of getting there. I had uh, 110 people in three months and 10 days. I had 110 people, three months, 10 days. So you can do it. Century Club, Century means 100. So if you have 100 in your organization, you're there, done. And some of you are like, God, oh, it's just me. You could do it between now and May. You got all of January, February, March, April. It's the end of May. You got five months. And what if you screwed up and you only had 80 and you only made an extra 60,000 revenue share this year? But then that group of 80 grew to 160 next year and you got about 120,000 rev share for your retirement. And then that group of 180 goes to 350. Now you have a quarter of a million a year cash. All because you wanted to go to a stupid party. <laughs> Are you with me? But that's me creating community. You got to create community. You, you may call the... Um, $10 bottle of wine club. I don't know if you got 10 agents, you can come. I don't know, but that was really bad. Okay, but you create something like they are, right? And then invite people into what you're doing and they will want to come like, wow, what a great group. We have guests here today. They're probably scared to death, but they're here. No, but they're like, wow, this is a cool group. And they're talking about real things. So how about um, taking people to dinner? Uh, Kelly brought her team to EXP. And what did we do last night? We had dinner together. At Rubino's. Yes. They go, well, I can't afford that. Have them come to your house, do a barbecue, hot dogs and hamburgers. People aren't like, come on over, I'll make it, we'll have a barbecue, throw some chicken on. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive. Can you bring hot dogs? Can you bring the hamburgers? I got chicken. Let's, and let's just hang out, be together. You know, have a glass of wine or don't, have punch, have coffee, iced tea, whatever. But people want that. It's up to you to create it. I've always done these things. So who are you going to do that with? Okay, so we're going to switch gears on you now. And, and, and um, I mean, hopefully we've given you lots of ideas about your mindset for 2021 and 22 and 23. Goals, dreams, vision, working on your business, adding massive value. These guys are running off the truckie and they're going to go, what can we do from to get listings to hiring people to, you know, vacuum their, you know, wash windows, scrub, handyman, just what can you do? Instead of saying, I, I can't compete with that, um, you, you can do a lot more than you think you can. So that was really good. So what I want to do is switch gears on you and talk to you about what I truly believe that will make a difference 10 years from now mm. and 20 years from now. Um, and, and that's this. And it's not just a fun trip to Cabo San Lucas. That's the Hyatt Ziva. We were supposed to go there February 21st. Um, the Hyatt was just uncomfortable with COVID blowing up and going crazy again. So they said, we're gonna let you move it to April 25th. No charge, no nothing. They pretty much <laughs> didn't give us much of a choice. So we rebooked our uh, annual mastermind in the tropics to uh, April 25th. The Hyatt's thinking was the vaccines are coming out and this isn't whether you're pro or anti-vaccine, but they are coming out. On the fir uh, in January, phase one, February, phase two, and March, phase three. It's going to take the punch out of COVID. They felt much better about us coming because we have about 1,000 people flying in from all over. This is a big deal. And I think that the people you bring here to this event, I, um, I'll give an example. I went to an event like this at the San Antonio River Walk. Um, I was invited Friday night. Uh, Friday, and uh, it was the following Wednesday. I had like five days, like, yeah, fly out to Texas, San Antonio, and come meet everyone at EXP at our mastermind. It was the uh, Weston on the Riverwalk. And it's cute and fun, but really it's a dirty little canal with trash in it, right? That's what it is. With nice things, but it's like, it's, it's what it is, you know? Um, it wasn't this. And, but I was so taken with what I saw that I, I, at first, I said, well, no, I can't do it. And they're like, well, why not? I'm like, well, I've, I'm doing real estate next week. I mean, I'm busy. I have listing appointments and got my team. My team. I can't go. I thought about it by Friday night. I bought three round-trip tickets and flew to the Western with Barry Mathis, James Troop, and myself to tear apart EXP from limb to limb. Because I was happy at Keller. I went there to prove it wrong. and go, let's go break it. Let's go. They'll, they said there'll be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents. They had uh, 400 people there. 
and that was four years ago. And we interrogated brokers from Colorado, Florida, North Carolina, agents, how long you met the company. Do you really get these stock awards? Do you really get this revenue share? Do they pay you? Do your checks bounce? You know, I mean, we want to know. I don't want to bring my, t my 18, 18. So we went and we loved it. And obviously two weeks later, we came back or a week later, we came back and moved our $100 million producing team into eXp. Um, and then uh, about eight, seven months later, they did another mastermind in San Diego on Coronado Island at the Marriott. Sounds exotic. Well, this Marriott was built in like 1910. It was nasty. They did it there because it was cheap. And uh, yeah, we're going to be in a private island off the coast of San Diego, Coronado <laughs> Island, and we're at the Marriott. And I'm picturing this. It is not that. <laughs> San Diego Bay is nasty. <laughs> it's out of jet fuel and, and, and Navy uh, oil everywhere, and it's rocks. There's no beach. And, and so, again, it wasn't that, but I showed up. But I brought, I think with me, I'd sponsored 15 people, brought them. And then they brought about, I think, about 80 with them. So I showed up with 95 people. So I'm telling you, you should not only be there, you should be there with, 95 people or 40, I'll help you. Let's do it together. Tom Days will help you. There are other people in this room, leaders, Joey Satriano, I could name names, I won't, Amir. But we help each other. Even John Stark will help you. I mean, that's, no, I'm kidding. I tease John. But we, we help each other. How many of you would help somebody else in this room, encourage somebody to go, would you? So we're one team, one dream, a rising tide rises all ships. When I was at Remax and the Matthews were selling 800 to 900 homes a year in Dallas, Texas, what did that mean to me and my family financially? Nothing. Did my stock become more valuable at Remax? Because all those, no, because there was no stock. Now when people do really well in Malaysia and Korea and Brazil and Colombia, and these, which we're opening this year, the stock of our company will go up. Well, who owns that? Raise your hand if you have some stock in EXP. So we will benefit from Rio de Janeiro broker success and Mexico City brokers. You may not go to Mexico City. Like, I don't understand how it works. Just go refer five to 10 people and watch what happens. Watch what happens. And so this is April 25th to April 30th. It's a five-day mastermind. I got only oceanfront suites for $225 a night uh, per person. But it includes all of your meals. They have five five-star uh, restaurants. They have bars, swim-up bars. They have infinity edge pools. It's, it is the number one resort in Cabo. There is no better resort. I've been to all of them. This is the best one. We like it the best. So um, we will be there. And so it is $4.50 a night per couple, oceanfront. If you want to share a room with someone, you're single or whatever, or your spouse can't come, you can do that. It's just 225 a night. It includes your oceanfront suite, all of your meals, adult beverages, everything. Pretty good deal, right? Yeah. We negotiated like crazy for that. Golf courses, sail fishing, and the um, our event is nine to noon every day. <laughs> go hit the pool, hit the beach, go kite surf, go go fish. We didn't bring, we're not going to bring you here to put you in their conference convention centers back in the back part of that property from 8 to 5 or 8 to 6. Oh, missed the pool again. Again. <laughs> missed the peach again. How was it? You're not tan because I sat in a convention center. <laughs> no, you're done at noon every day. We want you to actually have a vacation. We want you to make memories. We want you to meet people at the pool that sponsored 20 people and have 2,000 people in the group and make $1.5 in rev share. We want you to have breakfast with Glenn Sanford. We want you to have lunch with Jason Guessing, our CEO. We want you to have dinner with Michael Valdez. We want you to ride down the elevator with people who are just killing it at EXP. And you're like, no way. I was talking to them in the pool for an hour. Then I realized they had 5,000 people in their group and they make three and a half million dollars a year. So it's all happening. And every one of you in this room should be there. So you can register at brentgove.com. Um, for a room at this point. I don't think ticket sales are open. Nothing's open right now. Nothing? It's all shut down again? Well, we're, we're transferring everybody forward, and as soon as that process is done, we'll open a few. So it might open next week? I, I'm just getting reports right now on how many have transferred. So 500. Yeah, what, what it is is 500 people were booked for this, and then the hotel canceled everybody's room. So they've got to rebook here. 
So we will hopefully open yes. next week or the week after yes. so for registration. And by moving to April, we, ho we hope to open this up to about 11 to 1,200. So it's going to be a great time. So this is a big deal for you. And this is the actual resort right here. And it's really terrible. You're going to hate it. Um, you just, you, who wants to? That's a terrible place to sit in that reclining chair, dangle a little toe in the water, kind of scoop the water. Um, they got waiters, waitresses. You can rent the gazebos or get down by the beach. It is a phenomenal resort. So we want you to be there. But A, who are you bringing? I really got serious about getting people there. I helped them get there. I double stacked them in the rooms, whatever I had to do. And then we, that's why we had such explosive growth. Listen to me. The, the entrepreneurs who succeed really well have a gift of promotion. That this, this business does, if you, but you must learn to promote. Like if you had 10 or 15 agents here today, I guarantee your business will do better than if they hadn't been here. Does that make sense? And you got to learn to show up people. So make a list and get them there. Then there's Dallas. That's this August. I have Tony Robbins flying in the third day. It cost me $350,000. And he's going to train us all the third day. There's 6,000 people coming to that one. It's the size of Keller Williams Mega Camp, but it's not done by Keller Williams. It's not done by EXP. It's just me and James and Rob. He works on it 60 hours a week for five months going into this. It's 6,000 people flying in. We'll have Australians there, people from the UK, people from Portugal, France, Malaysia, South Africa, all over the world, all over the US, all over Canada, 6,000 of us. And I'm just telling you, you guys, we're gonna be the first company to have a million agents in 100 countries in 10 years because we're the only company arming our agents with ownership, arming them with an equity position. I won't go into any details, but Cindy came up to me and, and there was a traumatic situation happening for one of our EXP agents yesterday. And Cindy goes, let me show you how much stock you have. I don't even know how to find it. And she goes, oh my gosh, I have a lot of stock. And Cindy, they really needed money for a traumatic private personal family thing. And she was able to take her stock, move it into an account. And within how long? She had cash in her account, pulled the trigger, solved the family emergency not with trophies and plaques, which we all got for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> trophies and plaques don't solve, solve family emergencies. It doesn't matter if you were rookie of the year in 2003. And so you guys, it's real. And I can't even begin to tell you, um, the Fredericks have a million plus, Luann, uh, Marguerite has a million plus, Luann, you know, the more you do, the more you get. But this, how many people you bring in, front line, and then how many in your group? set goals so then help them get airfare help them register help them we worked hard to do that but the dividend the return was off the chart times a, a gazillion so um our goals are to have 57,000 agents in our seven levels by 2026 i think well bit good for you no no we need you to do well I, our goals are so big we have to we have to help you so the way we hit that is by helping you putting money, time, resources. You know, I have no idea what lunch costs today, but I paid, I didn't think, think twice about it. I'm feed you, take care of you, bring in talent and training again and again and again. We're not not uh, reinvesting like you heard James Becker said, don't hoard your commission or your rev share, reinvest. And, and I reinvested and it just it keeps going ch -ch 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 -ch, like this. And again, it's like, yeah, but I can't, yeah, but yeah, but get your butt out of the way. Right, get your butt out of the way. Stop it, right? Tell me why you can. A good friend of mine used to say this, listen to me, if you argue for your limitations and you win the argument, stop it. I don't, I don't have enough money. I guess you'll never have enough money. Uh, I'm not this. Uh, you can learn to change. You can be, and, and, and then there's people, I don't have Rob's skill set. He is, Amazing. I mean, I paid him well, and last year, I doubled what I paid him. I didn't give him a 10% raise or a 20. I flat doubled it. I mean, if if you wanted me to, I'd I'd be open to doubling it again. That's how valuable he is. <laughs> Who thinks I should double his salary this year? Should I do that? Why not? 
I'll think about it. Now, <laughs> but here's the deal. I'm dead serious. I'd say it to him because I'll probably do it because he's talented and I, I'm grateful. And so, you know, if you reward people, it's all good. It's when people don't reward you. And so I, I honor and recognize his talent. I don't have that. I can't do that. And um, I'm like Henry Ford. They said he really wasn't that smart. But, and they go, well, do you have a degree from Harvard or Yale? He's like, nope. I graduated from high school. And he's like, how you do? He's like, I surround myself with brilliant people. And, th- and that's the key. So, so Dallas, get that going. And so some more things I want you to think about as we wrap up today. When will you work? You cannot do this 24-7. You, you will blow out. You won't know your teenage children. Your, um, I was at Starbucks. I'll never forget it. It was like eight years ago. And this woman came in in stilettos, beautiful business dress, um, looked like she was a Wall Street, New York banker. And she had her five year, maybe a, a three year old, three, four year old with her. And she comes in in tow, gets her a juice box and a tray. And then mom sat there with um, her phone. And she was sort of, gosh, she's chewing gum. And, and she's, she's, you know, it wasn't too bad, but she's smacking her gum and she's on her phone. And the little girl's like, mommy, mommy and trying to talk to her, and she's like, I'm busy, mommy's busy, and, and I thought, okay, and like 30, I was there for 30 or 40 minutes, and I'm telling you that, I'm telling you, she never looked at her child once for 30 to 40 minutes, the kid was just playing around, looking, and, and maybe she had a lot going on, I don't know, but it's freaking tragic, and, and I'm begging you, don't work seven days a week at Real Estate, whether you're in EXP or not, take a day off and be dad, take time off and be a mom, I spent yesterday, I spent an hour with my 70 year old going, okay, brainstorm, blah, 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 blah. And he came with a thing, I go, just write it down, nothing stupid, write it down. <laughs> he wants to play a new sport. He wants to um, have new life experiences. He goes, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to explore deeper relationships with said friends. And, he, and then he put road trips. And that's his idea of, of just hanging, going to Santa Cruz, going up to, he's 17, they have cars. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's plan some. We planned it. He wasn't on there. I go, he wants to go to Tahoe and do outdoor things. I go, hey, rock climbing, but it's the middle of winter. How about I, I go up with your buddies and I take you snowmobiling? And then you can go back on your own and go snowmobiling. I know you don't want to hang out with your 54-year-old dad with your 17-year-old buddies, but you guys don't even know where to go. I'll set you up. You guys go have fun. He's like, really? And, and I go, how about Sugar Bowl? We'll go skiing. We'll get you in a beginner class. And he's like, he's like I've always wanted to do that. And so... Uh, we haven't really been a skiing family, but he wants to do that. So um, I didn't realize some of those things cost money. They don't all have to cost money, though. You with me? Yeah. And so I really spent time with him. You know why I did that? Because he saw me do it with my daughter, who saw me do it with my other daughter, who I do it with my kids. I pay them now. I can afford to do it. But a lot of people put their kids through college. I asked my kids not to go to college. I said, here's books. I want you to read them. I'll give you $100 a book. If you read two, three, I'll pay you two, three hundred dollars a week, twelve hundred a month. I have five kids. It's I spend six, seven thousand dollars a month getting my kids to read Og Mandino books and Dale Carnegie books and and books by Tony Robbins. I give the money mastering money by Tony Robbins or I, I forget money master the game. Master the game. Uh, Alyssa, who was in the back with Sarah earlier, I, you guys didn't see her. My adopted daughter, is she still here? Alyssa, I think she probably bailed out with Sarah. I gave her that book. I said, you read this book, I give you 500 bucks. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is, right? And I'm investing not in their college education because I don't believe in what the universities are doing to our kids. I don't believe, I just don't. Everyone do what you want. You believe in it, you send your kids to college. I see them come back and they're like, you know, and I'm like, no thanks. And so I, I, I'm teaching them to all own businesses I'm teaching them to have social intelligence, to walk up to people and say, come with us, come here, come here, come over to sit alone. When you see someone alone, you know, you bring them. Don't, don't, don't be the clicky group. Be the one who says, hey, come with us, come here. Who are you? What's your name? Join our team. And because and, and, they're, they're children, they need guidance. You don't laugh when people make fun of people. You tell your friends, no, 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 no. You should be ashamed of yourself. And stick up for people who can't stick up for themselves. Because we've all been that person, right? I've been that person. I've been on the outside. It didn't feel good. It hurts, right? And so I'm, I'm teaching them those things. And I'm, I'm spending the time. So please don't work 24-7. Please take time off. 
I'm, like I said, I'll be at Sutter Street Steakhouse tonight with my wife. Um, I'll probably have a little salmon, a little salad, and that's about it, and a cup of black coffee. And, and she'll have the red wine. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> woo, let's just shut it down now. All right, so, but if we do that, it's, it's not a, like a shocker. We, we go out every Wednesday night for 20 years. Well, you guys are real mechanical. and mo- I go, I'm busy. If I don't schedule, it doesn't happen. Yeah, I put it in because it's really important to me to date my wife. Not just like to, to treat her like we, when we first met, like before we got married and the sun rise. We go out every Saturday night. Every Saturday night we go out. Now, when we were poor, we went to Taco Bell or Mel's Diner or, right? There were times we couldn't even afford to do that. So I'm, it's okay. This isn't about going to Sutter Street. What? Costco, pizza, woohoo! Big slice, three bucks. We figure out how to do it, right? Uh, now it's like we can go anywhere in the world today because I put my chin out there and risk my ego. I didn't care what people did. I'm coming from love. If they don't love me, that's on them. I still love them. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. And then, and that's what you got to do. And it's massive action, massive action on the listings. Get you lots of listings. Massive actions on the wires. Get but you got to, you got to confine it. Real estate. Write this down. Real estate will consume all the time you give it. You can work 24/7. You know I'm speaking the truth. It will consume. So you must define it. I'm going out Wednesdays at 5:30 forever. I'm going out Saturday at 5.30, forever. I play golf Friday morning, every Friday, forever. I played golf Friday mornings for 20 years. Through the crash, I played golf. And the boom, I play golf, I play golf. Because daddy likes to play golf. Maybe you like to snow ski or cross country snow walk, which is like a really weird sport, but okay. <laughs> Maybe you like to shoot deer or, or fish, or you're a hunter. Um, you know, I'm a total right to bear arms guy, but I, I don't like driving ranges. I don't like guns. I don't own a gun. I don't. I have a seven iron. I'll wham, whack them. But uh, here's, I love guns. I mean, I love, I think it's important that we have an armed citizenship. But here's the deal. You need to, yeah, you, you need to decide when you're going to play. You'll burn out. Hot yoga, I don't care. Go for a run, go for a mountain bike, windsurf, kite sail, hike. Have, have a garden, right? Get in your garden. There's people who really get into that. I don't know what you do. I golf. That's what I do. I love it. I, I'm, I'm weird about it. But what is it you do? I know what I'm doing. Do you know that I scheduled every single day for 2021? I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do every day, every day, every week, every month, every vacation. It's all done. Have you done that? I went away by myself, bought an annual calendar. Because listen to me, listen to me. If you do not design your life, somebody will design it for you. Be here at 8, leave at 5. No, you can't go to Hawaii with your family because it's your parents' 50th because you already had two weeks paid vacation. I'm sorry, you can't go. Either men and women who have goals dictate to others, while men and women who have no goals are dictated to. Design your life or someone's going to design it for you. If you're hard on yourself, as my friend Zig Ziglar used to say, life will be infinitely easier on you. But when you're easy on yourself, it's just not working for me. I had to go take a job, right? So. When will you play? When will you prospect? I did Friday afternoons, two to five. This is what I do. I did not miss. I mean, I never missed. I went all in. Sponsored 40 in eight to 10 months. I don't remember exactly whether it was eight or 10, but I did it. I've never done it since. I didn't work on it year two, didn't work on it year three, didn't get on four. At about 20, just, it just kind of flows from there. Because I talk to so many people that they, they come around, okay, I'm ready now, I'm ready now. Joey, I talked to you. And, it, and Keller Williams was making him a trainer. Come be on the ALC. We love you. Speak at our offices. You could do one thing, train this and that. And he was kind of enamored by it and took that ride for a while. How long was it till he actually came to EXP? I worked on him too. About a year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. We go to church together. I see him across there. Lord, help Joey. Get <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't know. 
I, I prayed that God would take him where he wants him. If he wanted to stay at Keller, I pray for that. I really do. And so, but you got to do those things. Or the 21040, talk to two people a day. Two people tomorrow morning. You can do it. You may not. You may chicken out. You may go, my fear is just too big. This big fear, little dream, big fear. How about big dreams and goals? Put wells to people. You can put a well at a village in Africa and bring fresh water to, to 100,000 people for about 10 grand. You playing it small does not save humanity. There, you could save people from the sex slave trade. I sent a $10,000 check yesterday to a group that rescues children off a trash dump, the largest trash dump in Nicaragua. There was a matching donor, so they got $20,000. It's no big deal to do it. And we're doing a lot more with them. I've already done more in the past. But I just, yeah, let's give some more money. End of the year, let's give some money. It's good. Tax write-off, and it's a good thing. But they are rescuing five-year-olds and seven-year-olds that have been abandoned in Nicaragua on the world's largest trash dump in the world. It's the largest. The thing is like 15 square miles of trash dump. It's been there so long they've built schools on it. They have neighborhoods on top of the refuse. The kids are abandoned. They scamper the refuse looking for banana peels and used ho-hos and stale Doritos and eat it. And there's hypodermic needles sticking up. They're barefoot. And Ford Edge is the name of the company. They rescue these children and put them in, in the houses there in Nicaragua. And I support that. But I mean, I went all out. I mean, well, it's so cool. I think we made it, not to get into details, but we have an Excel spreadsheet that probably has 30 different things we care about that we give to. And we give big. It's, so it's not all about us and amassing things. We want to give and change lives. Are you capitalized? Treat it like a business. If you opened a pizza shop, by the way, there's a pizza shop open, I heard. Where's that one? <laughs> <laughs> I can only eat my food, so I'm, I'm, but I live through you. What's the name of that pizza shop? Primo's, where is that? Primo's on Sunset in Rockland? Where? Pete's in Rockland. There you go. Share the love. We have to support our restaurant people. It supports the busboys, the waiters, and all that, waitresses. Where? Brookfields. There you go. Rocky Ridge. Rocky Ridge. So look around. They're all, I'm telling you, these are speakeasies, man. You got to ask around. But uh, they are, they're speakeasies. Um, so here's the deal. If you open Primos, you'd probably need a hundred grand to open a Primos. You got to buy the ovens. You got to do all this stuff. You got to. So what did you do for your business? Did you put a hundred grand into? Are you capitalized? I mean, you wouldn't probably make it in a yogurt shop unless you bought six yogurt machines that do swirlies and all that. That's not cheap, right? Cash registers, computers. Have you cat? Well. How could I do that? I don't know, but man, you got to figure it out. It's like the big hair, my goal of 30. I had no idea, but I'm like, okay, new thoughts lead to new distinctions, lead to new ideas, sense of urgency. And I went from being wandering journal to I was urgently, desperately trying to show property to someone today. And guess what? It all changed for me. I mean, it's the first time I made 100000 in a month. You could change your life in the next 30 days. Real estate's a beautiful thing. The problem is... You just don't believe it. That's the problem. I believe it, but I've read the Dale Carnegie books. I've read the Augmandino books. I've read the Noticer by Andy Andrews. I've read the Tony Robbins stuff. I've been to the virtual stuff. I've been to Business Mastery One, Business Mastery Two. I've invested, invested. I've been to Brian Buffini. I've been to Tom Ferry. I've been to Craig Proctor. I've been to Howard Brenton. I've been to a lot of stuff for the years. I've invested, invested, invested into growing me so I could be very confident. I could drop me off in Phoenix and I'm going to go kill it. You put me in New, Newport Beach, I'm going to kill it. I don't care where you drop me, Oklahoma City, I'm going to do what it takes, apply massive action with love in my heart, and I'm going to make it. How many of you would bet against me? One person, James. <laughs> James was like, I'm with you, bet against me. He was like, ready with me, right? And that's great for me, but I want it for you. Stop watching The Walking Dead. Stop. <laughs> Arrow through the head, boom. I've seen that. I'm like, oh, God. That used to be massive horror. Remember the Friday the 13th in the 80s? I'm like, oh. And now you watch it. You know, you, I caught a little bit of it. I'm like, this so, it was so scary back then because we had the Brady Bunch. We had the Partridge family, Gilligan's Island, Fantasy Island, Zipplein, Zipplein. That was like scary. It's like, ooh, what happens on Fantasy Island? When Ricardo Montalban saves your marriage. Oh, that's a horror film. Right? So... Are you with me? 
But man, you, you know, how do you boil a frog? You, if, if you take it and you throw it in a pot of scalding hot water, it jumps right out. But if you put it in a big pan and it's lukewarm, you put them in there and then you slowly turn up the heat. He never even realized how warm it's getting. By the time he realized it's super hot, he can't jump and you boil the frog. All of a sudden, you, you, I, I'm telling you, you watch way too much news about Trump and Biden. You're all freaked out. I haven't, I, I couldn't handle it after, I mean, I was into the, I voted. And about three days after the election, that didn't stop. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Because I, I can't handle this. Whether you're pro-Biden, vote Trump. I don't go into that here. We're all different. And I respect and love everybody. But here's the deal. I, I, don't, I don't have a clue what's going on. Because I can't change it. I vote, do my civic duty. But I, I'm done. Because that you getting all worked up. You know, the, I've met Trump supporters like, we will freaking riot, you know? <laughs> and I've met the Biden supporters, we will freaking riot. I go, I believe it, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I believe it. Uh, I'm ready, I'm a seven iron. I don't know which way it's going. But uh, they're like, but here's the deal. Listen to me, that is not going to help you. Um, bad, right? Breaking bad? The high school teacher, I know the basic premise, he's desperate for money, has cancer, and he, does, he makes meth. It won all kinds of awards 13 years ago, but you're watching it again, or you heard it was good. And I, got, I watched one show with my wife. I'm like, this, this is not good. This stuff is not good. So you could have, listen to me, you could have been watching a TED Talks by some brilliant person. Have you been invited to do a TED Talks? You have? Well, congratulations. I have not. I'm jealous. So here's the deal, right? But they're brilliant people that are up there. And what are we doing? When's Walking Dead on? Right? When's, uh, I don't know. What are you reading? What are you doing? What do you put in? Your, they say your mind's like a computer, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. How about good stuff in, good stuff out? You're a product of your environment, man. Write this down. Proximity is power. These four getting together and going to Truckee is going to benefit them. Yes. Who, what four are you getting together? What eight? I got 50 people together and went to Tahoe and had a little meeting. I would have liked to invite all of you. I couldn't. It was just that we are limited in, inside a cabin. But I gather people. I'm doing what I can in COVID. This is the largest meeting I've hosted in a year. This is it. You're at the first one. I did have COVID six weeks ago. I felt great. I highly recommend it. All right, now. Um, now, I know some people, you know, that's now. So here's the deal. Will you capitalize? Where will you get capital? Do you have a part-time assistant? When I hired Sandra, my life, like I tripled my income in three months getting an assistant. My tripled my income. That was huge. Then she went full-time. General manager, I have all these things now. But I started. It was just me with nothing in escrow, looking in the mirror going, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to step up and do it. So I'm going to step up. Look it in the face. Stick your chest out and go, man, I'm up to the task. You know, Tom Daves, you, look, you guys look at him. He sells a, a lot, hundreds of homes every year. Sean Work and him shared an office, and he's like, oh, my gosh. What? He goes, I've never heard of him. He's just on the phone, just call after call, just, just massive action, massive action. You know why he's successful? Because he works his tail off. Get out of your head. Tony Robbins says, you're in your head, you're dead. Go thinking about it and go make the call and make another and have a plan. And, and, and I don't know what it is. Open house. I was the open house guy. I did them Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but I was at Apple Hill on Monday. I was at Bishop's Monk and Patch on Wednesday. I was at the Sacramento Zoo on Friday. I was the dad at all the kids stuff because all the other dads were working. I worked on the weekends. I was a weekend warrior. I worked 18 hours a day on Saturday, 18 on Sunday when I was first in real estate. And they get the point where I haven't had to do open houses in a decade but I'm kind of known for it. And I could go out and get a ton of business and pick up buyers for free and, and just rock and roll and, and make a hundred grand in a month. But there, there's a process. I paid the price. What I do, I love people and worked hard. What's so bad about that? Stop protecting your precious ego. Stop, it's madness. So um, do you have a business hub? Get a, get a little an office at, at a Regis at a spaces, or there's three other competitors that in, in, in Rockland that compete with Regis. So then Tom Daves, what's the name of that place you guys just moved into? Lone Street Plaza, 15 on Lone Street. Lone? 
And he has 3,000 square foot office. That is huge. It's, it's like almost the size of this place for like 3,800 bucks a month. Now, you, I don't need that much. They have small executive suites. What are the, some of them run? Have you heard? Yeah, but the little offices, because not everyone needs that, they run like 295 a month, 195 a month. Three, they're, they're affordable. Get a hub. Get, get somewhere. Now, if you're used to work from home, work from home. But I think having a hub is an important thing. I've had a hub. I love mine. I've been there for four years. It's been really good. A couple things I want to share with you. Number one, I'm going to say it again. Set clear goals. There's a great story Zig Ziglar tells as we're on the home stretch here about Howard... Um, I forget his last name, doesn't matter. And he's, a, he's one of the top archerists in the world at the turn of the century in the 1900s. Um, archery was a big deal back then, 1901, 1902. So this guy could hit a bullseye every single time. He was the Michael Jordan of archery. And they would have turkey shoots. People would put up like $5, which is like 500 today. It was a lot of money. And every time he entered, he won every single one. He just, he got so good he could pull out an arrow, hit the bullseye, pull out another arrow, and hit the shaft of the arrow, he hit the bullseye, and split the shaft right down the middle. He was like a Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, uh, you know, uh, Tom Brady. He was a really gifted athlete. And people, he got to a point where he had to give up the sport because nobody would compete with him. He was just in an error of his own. True story. And Zig Ziglar says this. He goes, I could have all of you shoot the bow and arrow better than uh, Howard within about three minutes. Every one of you in the room. And you're like, Zig, it's ridiculous. I mean, that's impossible. The man was gifted. There's no way. He goes, nope, every one of you would beat him. Raise your hand if you know this story. Raise your hand high. About four of you. You've heard me do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's funny. All four of you. So, I, yeah. Oh, it's weird. I recognize all four of you. So he goes, I can have you shooting better, provided we blindfold Howard and spend him around and around and around and then stop him in any particular direction leave the blindfold on and say, let the contest begin. How, and how many of you think you could shoot better than him if he left his blindfold, didn't know what direction he was pointed? Come on, raise your hand. Okay. I'm like, well, that's ridiculous. That, that's not fair. It's not fair. The man can't even see the target. He can't even see the bullseye. And to that, Zig Ziglar says precisely, how can you hit a goal you don't even have? And so what I want to wrap up today is redefine your goals. Get total clarity around those goals. And, and because all areas of your life, and get very clear, because listen to me, hope is not a strategy. Write that one down. Hope, I hope 2021 is getting better. It will be no different than 2020 and 2019. Quit taking yesterday's baggage into tomorrow and expecting it to be different. Stop. The definition of madness is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. They go, Brian, I've tried diets tonight. Me too. I kept running up the hill, but finally when I went all in, it worked. And I, it's always worked in my life when I went all in. When I learned how to, I'm going to figure out, it, my first year in real estate, I got to figure this out. I went all in and figured out buyers. And then I, I had a listing and they were mean. What do you do to sell my house? And they were kind of bitchy and Buyers were fun. They're like, oh, my God, we love it. to make an offer. You get it. Ask, oh, yeah. And then you give them the keys. They're crying. You got to come over. I like buyers. Sellers like, what are you doing to sell my house? Yeah. Go away. So I wrote them off for years. So I finally said, you know, I got to figure this thing out. And so when it went all in, I, it took me 10 years. So I became a listing agent. And I haven't worked with a buyer in a decade. And I love buyers. I enjoy them more than sellers, but I also love my family. And, and I could leave town Thursday afternoon and come back Tuesday morning and have four-day weekends. Thursday, Friday, Thursday night. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, come home Tuesday. Four and a half day weekends every weekend. And I do all my work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I did that so many times. I had 18 to 28 listings. Tell them all, we're not looking at offers till Tuesday night. Why? Because I'm going to Bodega Bay. <laughs> The sellers were like, oh my God, but what if an offer comes in? Oh, what if an offer comes in? I go, we make them wait till Tuesday. Because guess what? Offers have babies. Anybody knows that? Yeah. Offers have babies. And I go, no, I can present you one. It's 10,000 under and it's a pretty good offer. You might take this and you take it. But if we wait till Tuesday, if one more comes, we got a bidding war. 
Noel, do you want to sell your house or do you want to sell your house in a bidding war? Anyway. What is it? Oh, really? You yeah. wait till Tuesday. You know, with me? Worst case, they said, they'll wait. Trust me, they'll wait. And then I go, now tell me you will not look at offers till Tuesdays. I would love to present your offer. I tried to talk sense into her, but she said she <laughs> will not look at offers till Tuesday. She said it with her own lips. I would love to help you. <laughs> and then you get, it's awesome. It's awesome. Because we've all been the agent we want to offer presented now, right? So you got to do the takeaway. You're like, look, no offense, but um, we're going to go buy another home Sunday. We're not, we can't wait till Tuesday. They have a right to wait till Tuesday. I get that. But it's a full price offer. We close it 10 days. They can stay for three months, rent free. It's as is. We threw the kitchen sink at you. Just make sure they know they're throwing away a really good offer. I get called back from that agent. We accept. We accept. You got you to get good at the takeaway. Even me. People do that to me every once in a while. And I'm like, dang, I got to go get clams. I'm in Bodega Bay and go clamming. But I'm like, I got to present this offer because this Matthew Cowboy is going to go buy another house. Probably lying his face off, but I don't know. He might be serious, and the sellers will get mad. So, um, so anyways, are you with me? So, all right. So here's what I want to say. 80, write this down. Hey, we got two minutes. 80% of the chokehold your business is your personal psychology. 80% of the chokehold your business is your personal psychology. The lies you tell yourself about how you, you just can't stop. Um, I will say this, add more value than the other brokers in town if you want to attract agents. Become more valuable than their sales manager, their broker at Lions or Remax. Help them, help them, help them. And if they never come, help them anyways, because that's what life is about. Loving, caring, buy them groceries, help their kids, do things for them, right? When do we want people to do that for us? Well, no one does that for me. Maybe it's because you're not doing it for them. People do nice stuff for me all the time, but I'm always laying it out for them. Do the same thing, you sow what you reap. If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. Right? If you don't like this, the size of the window you give through is the size of the window you get through. I'm not getting much where you're, you're probably not giving much. You give smiles, you get some, people smile at me all the time, but I'm always smiling at them. I make friends everywhere, right? And so write this down. Hunger is your greatest asset. 40 seconds. Hunger is your greatest asset. Man, you got to want it. You got to want it. You got to just be sick. Of, I've had enough of the enough buffet. I want, to, I want my life to be different. Now we're talking. Now get in a little core accountability group. Hire Casey. She does counseling. Hire her. Call her up. Take action now. Act now. Proximity is power. Passion is infectious. Be human. Do your agents know that you love them? Do they really know? The ones you've sponsored in, are you there for them? Do they know it? I'm Steve Evans' sponsor. I make sure he knows I love him. I care about him. John Stark, not so much. No, I can't help. I don't know why I'm teasing him. Like but here's the deal. Final thought. Final thought. We're done. Ready? What's the one thing you could do in 2021 to change your life? And I'll tell you right now, for some of you, it's work on your marriage. It's not sponsor 25 people. For some of you, it's lose weight. Pick a word for this year. My word for last year will surprise you. It was no. Because I said yes to McCoonies and yes to in and out and yes. I love, I love donuts. I mean, I get fired up when I drive by a donut shop. Coffee and donuts. Oh, my God. Like, you go to Chevron, you get gas. I go in and I'm like, there's the ho-hos. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I freaking, I don't like them. I love them. I love ho-hos. The little package of donuts. No, I'm serious. No big deal for you. I'm like, the, the devil, do, do it. No, the angel. Yes, no, oh, the devil's got me. <laughs> right? So what is the one thing in 2021? For some of you, maybe it's sell 50 homes and side, share, change your financial situation. For some of you, stop selling 50, go to 25 and do the rev share thing. I was doing 60. I dropped to 30 on person. I created margins. 30 on purpose, created the margin to go do this thing. Some of you need to sell less. You know who I'm talking to. You don't need to double it or do the same. You need to sell less on purpose. Well, what will people think? There you are being narcissistic again. Quit thinking about what people think. Go love some people. So I'll leave you with that thought. What's the one thing you could do? And pick a word. Mine was no. I didn't buy a thing this year. Well, I just bought a car two days ago. But the year's over. And the accountant says, buy the car and pay $80,000 in taxes tomorrow. 
So I bought the car, saved me a little money on taxes. I got 80,000 off the car or just pay 80,000. So other than that, I bought nothing. I said no to financial purchases. I said no to bad food. I said no to watching bad movies. And, and it made room for yes. It was about, does that make sense? Yes. Have a great weekend. We love you guys. We'll see you.